I was chatting to Olga Barry in last week's Oboe Winfrey and Olga said that my guest this week broke into people's houses and stole their hearts with her beautiful voice. Maren Nikoliff is part of an exciting collaboration between the Kilkenny Arts Festival, the Irish Chamber Orchestra, Donal O'Connor and six Irish composers. Everyone comes from a very different musical world. The original songs are from the Chanoz tradition, so we have traditional, classical, contemporary, all in one go. This concert will be performed as part of the Kilkenny Festival and represents an enormous melting pot of creativity. To be honest, I've got no idea where to start to unpick this, so I'm going to ask Murren to do the hard work for me. Hello Murren, how are you today? Hello Matthew, thanks for having me. How are you? I'm okay, not too bad, thank you very much. Good. Now, I know that the songs in the Chanot style, they're traditional Irish songs from between the 16th and the 19th century. What I first wanted to ask you, what really attracted you to these songs in the first place? Well, I feel and have felt for a long time that these songs, in particular the ones that I've picked and a lot of the ones that I was researching, they come from the classical Chanot's tradition. So it's a form of high art. And it's a form of art that is completely an Irish thing that I wanted to, I suppose there was an element of wanting to showcase it and not necessarily elevate it, but maybe give it a fresh treatment. And uh, also for me as a singer, they're challenging, challenging songs to sing. Um, which pushes me on, you know? So there would have been the types of songs there that I would have maybe sung one or two of for a concert. You know, I'd include them here and there. And I never thought of doing a whole night of them thinking that it would be maybe too much for the listener and too much for me as the singer. Um, but then lockdown happened and these were the songs that I was drawn to and that I was, you know, really appreciating the beauty in them. Not just the, the beauty of melody, but even before you before you put music to these, there's there's melody in in the poetry of the words and the sound of the language. And there's just there's so much beauty in them that I, I realised that that's really where my heart lies now as a singer. It's like I've kind of come full circle back to these songs because some of them I would have known as a young girl growing up here in West Kerry. There are so many wonderful singers around me and it's, you know, it's not a, it's not about being a professional singer or performing at you know, on a stage, it's just something that naturally happens and, and everyone has a song or two in them. Um, so I just felt so drawn to them. And yeah, I wanted to try and do something with them that was exclusively maybe my contribution to our ever evolving tradition. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how the project with the ICO and Donal O'Connor came to life? I mean, you've told me about your journey with the songs, but where did this collaborative project all start? Well, it, it was, I suppose, this time last year. And um, we were up in Dublin, Donal and I, we were recording um, a concert in Windmill Lane Studios, one of these online concerts. And oh, it, was, it was wonderful to be performing, but we were also, I suppose, all trying to find our way through the whole thing. And for me, the thing that seemed to help me get through it wasn't so much stopping and pausing as planning for the future so that mm -hmm. I could convince myself there was going to be a future. <laughs> and um, Donald was saying, well, you know, what would you like to do? Like when all this is over, you know, you know, it, I suppose it was a reset button in the sense that any nerves I would have had over tackling projects such as this, you know, what's there to lose anymore? It could all end tomorrow. So he was like, what would be the dream? What would be the dream project? And I kind of was saying, well, I, I really would love to maybe do something with a string quartet or something like that and maybe work with a pianist uh, you know to, to me that was pushing my boundaries but Donald's the kind of guy that takes an idea and runs with it he's 
very experienced producer, both as a music producer and a producer of television programmes, which are very often um, musically themed. So, uh, and then we, we spoke with some other wonderful advisors and friends like Aileen McCran. And uh, she introduced me to Jerry, uh, who in turn introduced me to Olga Barry. And the whole thing grew legs and, you know, it was terrifying and thrilling in equal measure. It's been a process and and many different people have joined the team, which is wonderful because I firmly believe in allowing people with the correct skills to do the jobs required. I think a lot of musicians, we, we try and do everything ourselves and there's plenty that I'm not good at. So it, it feels wonderful to have this support and so many people who believe in it and who are really into it because in my head, it's niche of niche, you know? So who's, who's going to want to hear this? Is anyone going to be interested in this? So to get that positive response so far is hugely encouraging. Um, I'm really eager to find out what it was like working with the Irish Chamber for, Chamber Orchestra for the first time. I mean, was it? Were they nice? Were they nice to you? Was it how you imagined it would be? Were they a bit cheeky? Tell me about it. I'm so green to this. I've I've <laughs> I've recorded once or twice with orchestras, and each time it was kind of a just in and out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really, really nervous coming into the experience. Um, felt very, uh, I suppose, inadequate. I was afraid of my reading skills and that I wouldn't be consistent enough for the orchestra and all these things. And I was just a knot before I started to open, before I even opened my mouth, you know. Um, and everyone was wearing the masks as well. So I couldn't tell any facial expressions or anything like that. But, oh God, within a couple of minutes, it ju I just knew it was everything was going to be fine. And they were so gorgeous. And they were all, you know, they make an effort, an effort to come up and, and chat. And then, of course, after the rehearsals, we had a glass of wine and got to know them a little bit better. And, oh God, I think I was actually weak laughing at some of their stories as well. <laughs> so, you know, I suppose... There's this old perception that classical musicians are kind of a bit more serious and professional and all these things, which, of course, they are it's so confident and so amazing. But my God, they know how to have fun as well. And <laughs> yeah, they're a great bunch, a great, great bunch. And actually, I think, you know, speaking with them and hearing how open they are to lots of different projects has been really interesting. And I think just the music world has changed, you know, I think. For many years, we were all very confined to our own spaces and almost suspicious of one another. And I love that things have opened up like this. I think it's really healthy and we're all just really learning from each other. Absolutely, yeah. Now, the, my last question, I want to know, what are you hoping that the audience will take away from the concerts when they hear this deeply traditional music, but also something new? Well, it's interesting to say something new because some people have, you know, from the purest tradition have questioned my decision to accompany these songs at all because in essence they are generally sung unaccompanied if you're to be purely traditional about it. But actually, that's a it all comes down to your definition of the word tradition, which some people seem to base around, you know, the beginning of recordings and so let's say the 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 late uh 1800s and the early 1900s that was you know traditional music but if you go further further back you'll see that these songs were accompanied um often by harp other often by other instruments and it was uh you know through poverty and oppression and a myriad of different reasons that died out and we were left with just the songs. So I want to bring these songs to a stage that befits them. That's not to say it's not correct to sing them in the pub or at your family gathering, but I just want to bring them to a new audience. I want people to renew their 
their kind of uh, relationship with them. So for Irish people, a lot of these songs, they'll know in the back of their minds. They'll have heard growing up and they might have fallen out of favour or been associated with a certain type of singing. I just want to freshen them up and remind people of them. And then I also really want to um, showcase them to a new audience as well and let people hear the beauty in them. And hopefully that will you know, generate a curiosity in learning more about Irish song and the Irish language and, and our culture in general. So, you know, it's not a big ask. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I'm sure that all of those boxes will get ticked. <laughs> Murren, many thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. And I really hope the concert goes well. I have seen some of the clips of the recordings and stuff, and you sound absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. It's, it's like it's a dream come true. I'm pinching mm. myself. So it's lovely mm. to speak with you, Matthew. Thank you very much. Roisin Reimagined will be streamed from Kilkenny and will be available from a limited time from the 13th of August. Check out kilkennyarts.ie for full details. Take care and I will see you next week. Mm.